Hey guys, Mr. P. In this video, we're going to specifically talk about glycolysis. If you remember from the last video, we talked about an overview of cell respiration, which included a brief discussion of glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and the chemiosmotic pathway. If you recall, glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm, which is the fluid uh, inside the cell membrane but outside of the organelles. Krebs cycle and the ETC are all housed within the organelle itself, the mitochondria. So we're going to focus on this third of the cell respiration pathway, turning glucose, which is C6H12O6, into two pyruvates so that those pyruvates can enter the Krebs cycle. The first thing that we need to do when talking about or breaking down the process of glycolysis is obviously start with our starting molecule, which is glucose. Glucose is C6H12O6. It has six carbons, and so we're going to designate each of the six carbons as one of six of these blue circles. So C6H12O6, glucose, six carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, the first thing that happens within the glycolytic pathway or within glycolysis, again, this occurs in the cytoplasm. We are not in the mitochondria yet, but we move these glucose molecules to every tissue cell in our body, and then we have to break them down in order to kickstart the cellular energetic process. It is important to note that because glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm outside of the mitochondria, it is an anaerobic process, meaning it does not require O2, meaning glycolysis is going to be taking place with or without oxygen present, which is an important uh, distinction of the cellular respiration process and a differentiator of the Krebs cycle and the uh, chemiosmotic pathway. So glucose is assimilated into the tissue cells. Glucose, again, is C6H12O6, which is designated by the six circles. The first thing that is happening to each of the glucose molecules as they begin to break down is we have to invest two ATP molecules, meaning we bring in two ATPs. Those are adenosine triphosphate. They are high energy compounds, and they break down by releasing their third phosphate. We've talked about how ATP utilizes the energy stored within the bonds, and they are going to be converted into two ADP they are going to release the energy during the conversion of ATP into ADP, and when they do that, it is called phosphorylation, meaning they're going to not only release the energy associated with the ATPs, they are also going to put the phosphates onto the ends of the glucose and will change this molecule to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Bi meaning two, phosphate, the two orange circles are phosphates. They are added to the ends, changing this molecule from a glucose to a fructose. So phosphorylation is the addition of the third phosphate of these ATPs to the two ends of our glucose, changing the glucose into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. After we add those phosphates onto the ends of our glucose, we then break or split that molecule in half. By putting the phosphates on the end, it puts a strain on this middle bond between these third and fourth carbons, and it splits in a process called lysis. Once we have these two halves of a glucose produced, that marks the end of this first half. Once we split our six carbon molecule in half, we then have to phosphorylate. So by the addition of a second phosphate to each of the three carbon molecules, we now have two halves that each have two phosphates each. We refer to that molecule as G3P, glyceraldehyde three phosphate. That marks the midpoint of the glycolytic pathway. Once we have our G3P produced, we then are going to bring in our low energy electron carriers known as NAD plus. And once we bring in the NAD plus, it is going to take a pair of electrons and a hydrogen ion from our G3P, add them to the NAD plus, converting the NAD plus into NADH. Once the NADH is produced, 
Again, both sides are taking the exact same thing, two electrons and a hydrogen ion. The NADH is made, and once the NADH is made, it will be transported into the mitochondria where it will bond to the mito endomitochondrial membrane, Criste, where it will be utilized during the ETC for the chemiosmotic phosphorylation in order to make large amounts of ATP. This step is called oxidation. If you remember from previous videos, redox reactions or reduction and oxidation reactions are coupled and oxidation is when you lose electrons. So this G3P molecule is oxidized. We take two of these electrons out of each of our G3P and then we are reducing NAD plus by adding that pair of electrons to them in order to convert NAD plus into NADH. Once NADH is made, again, it heads to the cristae, the inner mitochondrial membrane, where the ETC, or electron transport chain, is waiting in order to pump out large amounts of ATP. Once we remove the pair of electrons and hydrogen ions from our two G3P molecules, we now have an intermediate. It is not important that you know the name of that. But once we have this intermediate made, we can then... produce a little bit of ATP from that molecule. So we bring in a total of four ADPs, two ADPs per G3P. ADP is adenosine diphosphate. Once we bring in the two ADPs, they are going to pull the phosphates off of our G3P and convert the two ADPs for each pathway into two molecules of ATP, or adenosine triphosphate. They come in as two phosphate molecules and leave as three phosphate molecules. So one ADP takes this and converts it into an ATP. The other ADP takes the other phosphate and converts it into an ATP. And after you produce the ATPs, again, a total of four, two plus two is four, we then have two pyruvates. The pyruvates are three carbons each and do not possess any phosphates because the phosphates have been pulled off and added to the ADP to produce the ATP. This process would be called dephosphorylation because we are pulling the phosphates off. That is the opposite of phosphorylation, which at the beginning is when we added the phosphates to our glucose in order to kickstart the splitting or the lysis, we have to add those phosphates initially so that we can dephosphorylate or pull them off later to ultimately produce a little bit of energy in the process of breaking these glucose molecules down. Now, there are two halves. We have a top half and a bottom half. The top half is referred to as an energy investment phase because we are investing or spending to ATP. We are spending to ATP, meaning we have a net loss at this point of two ATP. But just like any good investment, we want to spend a little bit of energy in order to gain more energy back. We want a return on our investment. So we initially spend two ATPs to ultimately get a payoff. And so the bottom half of this is an energy payoff phase. This requires a net gain of 4 ATP or a plus 4 ATP, meaning if we spend 2 but we gain 4 overall, we have a net gain of 2 ATP. Every time we go through a glycolytic pathway or produce this glycolysis pathway, Per glucose, we are gaining a net total of two ATPs per glucose. Glycolysis, as we said, occurs in the cytoplasm. It is occurring out here, outside of the organelles, is the cytoplasm. Again, we just went through the intricacies of the process, but the gist of the process is we take a glucose and we convert it into two individual pyruvates. Those pyruvates are then going to move into the mitochondria where they will join the Krebs cycle, which is occurring in this matrix or the inner fluid of the inner mitochondrial membrane. 
where those pyruvates will then be further broken down into those high energy electron carriers called NADH and FADH2. Once that FADH2 and NADH is made, it will head to the cristae or the inner mitochondrial membrane where the ETC is located to pump out large amounts of ATP. Again, this video is just about glycolysis. More intricate details about the Krebs cycle and the ETC is coming in a later video. But for now, that's it. If you learned something, give it a thumbs up. Leave any questions in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. See ya.